Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear, and today we're going to take a look at the new Horus Heresy Betrayal at Kalth rules for how to play the box set game, which looks really interesting. Uh, I, I won't lie. It doesn't look like just, uh, hey, let's just throw this shit in here and uh, make a bunch of miniatures and people are going to buy it. It actually looks like it doesn't suck, so I wanted to give that aspect of this box set a little bit more time but before we get to that I would like to invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out the blog spikybitsblog.com and head on over to the longwar.net that's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content early access videos and promotion codes that help you save on all the stuff you buy every month for the hobby become a veteran of the long war today so like I was saying we're going to take a closer look at the game that actually comes Part, as part of this box set, it isn't just a, a, a gimme, so to speak. There's a 48-page rule book uh, that actually is um, it's got some it's got some content to it, to be quite honest. Now, if you haven't seen the unboxing we already did unboxing video we already did uh, for this whole thing, you definitely uh, check the same channel here, the Spiky Bits YouTube, and uh, check all that out because it's uh, there's a lot of stuff to this box set. Obviously, you get you know 30, 40 some miniatures that come in here. I believe the exact number is 38, and this fantastic looking rule book that you know definitely should remind you about some of the stuff that you've seen from Forge World that you can still purchase currently. You know, there's five uh, five books, no four books already. We're waiting on the fifth. Hopefully, uh, I believe it's going to be called Retribution, but Back to this one here, taking a closer look, it's a 48 page rule book, which basically this half of it is all rules up to here, and then you got your scenarios, and then it goes into the actual fluff itself, talking about, you know, the whole Her Horus Heresy, along with the Ultramarines, the Word Bears, you know, the two factions involved in this epic epic uh, struggle underground in the, the arcologies they call them of Kalth itself so you know, basically everybody ran underground when the star went supernova not to the point that it would blow up the planet but definitely to the point that it was giving off too much radiation and solar flares that nothing on the surface could really survive so everybody goes underground and hey let's keep on fighting <laughs> there's a whole bunch of novels from uh, Black Library that ca catalog all this all the desperate fights underground and dark damp you know our colleges and things but this is basically the tabletop representation of, of all that action so it's brother against brother you know you got the whole horse heresy and all of that now when it comes to the actual game uh, you have these reference cards which are basically for each squad that shows the stats your armor stamina assault and bulk and bulk represents the model's sheer size and volume is used to determine how many models can share a hex. And the cool thing about this, all of this, uh, this whole game is it's basically a hex-based game, similar to Space Hulk, uh, except for the fact that it is hex. Uh, but it's on a similar kind of board uh, board setup right here, which you can kind of see. And you can tell, you know, that is, if you compare it to what they include in here, you know, a 32 millimeter base, you can basically tell, there's one, you can fit about three normal tactical marines in the Anna space, or one dreadnought right there, or, you know, a certain amount of terminators, which is probably two. So that's where the bulk part comes in, right? And you also notice on this board too, that it is definitely the underground kind of ecology or you know arcology is the ecology of the arcology so you got you know stalactites and stalagmites some of them you know they cut off here they're obviously impassable that's what this red indicates and you know smaller ones which you know aren't quite as impassable notated by the dotted lines there or the ones that reach all the way up to the cavern uh, ceiling and then you've got machinery tiles and things like that as well so it all there's four of these to give you different kind of games and they they show you basically how to set it up to do the different type games so that being said each player has three reference cards uh, they depending on what mission you're playing it'll tell you which ones to take and then you have command cards as well and they allow players uh, to use tactics that represent the unique combat doctrines of the word bearers and ultramarines they draw a card from the command deck into his hand uh, from which he can play them according to the rules on the card when a card is played it's placed into the face up discard pile next to the player's command deck now there's desecration markers uh, standard markers basically you know for uh, taking taking control of areas and things the dice itself they have a hit 
they have a heal and they have a critical hit which can trigger that sort of effect on a weapon which is really interesting to see on one side is of course blank there's open blast doors and sealed blast doors for keeping out you know the deadly solar flares and then you have your tactical markers which are front and back one has only one one has two and those basically notate the actions that each model can take every turn as far as the general principles go these are just basically like hey this is kind of kind of like the uh I guess in 40k terms this would be the universal special rules or just the rules in general like how to count hexes if the rules require you to count hexes they might refer to a unit that is within three hexes of another so you count along the shortest path and they kind of show you there and it's just, it's just sort of like that hex capacity you know bulk value uh, hex can hold any combination of models so long as their combined bulk values do not exceed three so you know a legion air has a bulk value of one a cataphractic terminator has two and so a hex could contain three uh, dudes in power armor or an a legion veteran and a cat or a legion uh, veteran which is basically a sergeant uh, cataphractic terminator but not two cataphractic terminators so that kind of gives you an idea or of course a contemptor would fit in one as well because obviously they wouldn't be able to walk around so they kind of explain all of that to you there now playing the game itself there's three different phases and you roll for initiative at the top of each turn so basically it's similar to age of sigmar in that regard is you don't always know who's going to go first um, so it kind of makes it really interesting to do strategies and to perform your actions because you just don't know. You might get two turns in a row, you might have a, a really big gap between your turns. And that's the initiative phase. The ready, uh, the ready phase is a player draws a card from their command deck and adds it to his hand. And it, um, each unit on the board then receives their two tactical points. So you basically flip, it's a ready phase. It's a very standard thing. You know, it's in uh, a lot of the X-Wing stuff in Armada as well. Action phase, starting with the player that has the initiative, uh, takes turns to activate a unit, which is on the uh, basically tells you how to activate a unit right here. A player must spend one of his tactical points to activate it. Then you can also perform actions, which are five available on the next page that we'll show. We'll show you here in a second. Uh, if you run out of units with tactical points remaining, uh, then the opposing player continues to activate units, uh, one for each activation until they have run out as well. So it's kind of like a chess clock but not really reliant on time in that regard, you know what I mean? So the actions advance, you can uh, move into adjacent and unoccupied hex, uh, pinned, a unit is adjacent to an enemy unit is pinned, pinned units can only make advance, consolidate, or assault, run, can obviously move up to two hexes, uh, each move must take it into an adjacent, unoccupied, so you can't bull rush through dudes, um, if you run into a rubble hex, which is what I showed you earlier with the, the white dots, and there's one right there, um, the let's see if it moves in a rubble hex or a hex is adjacent to enemy unit that action ends immediately so it basically slows you down consolidate any number of models in the activated unit can move into an adjacent hex with sufficient capacity uh, and if it moves into there it can join the unit so basically you can go from having three to join to make you know if there's one here you could fill out the squad and make a squad of two and make a squad of two over here uh, kind of type deal assault the activated unit makes a melee attack page 15 which is obviously an action and there's some weapons and things that give you bonuses to that as well in the back and we'll show you that here in a second if it is not adjacent to an enemy unit the activated unit cannot move into adjacent unoccupied hex before it makes its melee attack provided that this hex is adjacent to an enemy unit if the target unit contains at least one model after the attack has been resolved it can immediately make a melee attack against the activated unit without being activated itself so it's kind of like that got that um what is it um where you use the weight of your attack to basically carry yourself through into another attack uh, i don't think it's repose it might be repose because it's basically not a feint but anyways that's what it seems like to me uh if the target unit is unoccupied um, at the end of action, either becomes all models removed as casualties or because all models retreated, the activated unit can choose to immediately move into it for free. So basically, you can get some free movement, kind of like consolidation of 40k. Retreat. After all melee attacks have been made during an assault phase, count up the number of models removed as casualties from each unit. If more were removed than the target, uh, then from the activated unit, the target unit must retreat. A retreating unit must make a consolidation action during which all models must leave their hex if possible. However, if no model can move into hex, that is adjacent to an enemy, model, an enemy unit, any model that cannot leave this hex must make a desperate last stand. Roll a dice for each model that makes a desperate last stand. If a shield is rolled, the model stays where it is uh, and loses any remaining tactical points. If anything else is rolled, the model is removed as a casualty. Now, as far as that goes, on that dice, there is two shields, there is uh, two uh, hit markers, and there is one critical effect and one blank. So you basically have um, you know, 
whatever the math is on that, you know, two, well, two thirds, excuse me, <laughs> two sixths, which breaks down obviously into a third chance of actually passing that. Uh, over here, you got shoot. Uh, the activated unit can make a ranged attack, which is also uh, later on in here, um, against the target unit. Uh, obstructed shots basically explains how all that works. There's rubble, which were those dotted lines. Targets in the rubble hacks any models in the unit add one dice to any defense roll. The barricades, if it crosses a barricade within the target unit's hex, um, add two dice to any defense rolls they are making. So a barricade is one of those pieces that you actually put on the table. That's not going to be something that. Um, uh, that is part of the board, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, barricade face. Yep. So there is also obstruction faces as well. Um, so before we get to all that, kind of move, jumping ahead on accident. So uh, to resolve attacks, you make an attack roll, which is rolling that d6. And we just talked about the odds on it. Select the target model, make a defense roll, and then allocate the damage. Uh, any remaining hits in the damage pool are allocated to the target model one at a time. If the number of hits is equal to model, model stamina, are allocated that many hits are discarded from the damage pool and the model is removed as a casualty. If fewer hits are allocated in the model stamina, then they are discarded. So basically you have to do the right amount of damage. So that's kind of where it comes in. It's a little bit different from normal 40k rolling the hit, rolling the wound, and rolling the armor save. If there are any hits remaining in the damage pool, repeat steps two to four until all hits have been dis uh, discarded or allocated or until all models and target unit have been removed as a casualty. And of course, it's a couple examples. So obviously, the more dice you have, the better off it is, you know, to try to get through people's armor and deal that damage and where they can't, you know, basically, um, I guess overwhelm their armor, I guess is basically how it works. <laughs> like, it is a different game, but it still has very similar, you know, um, I guess mechanics, so to speak. Critical effects, triggering critical effects. One or more critical hits are rolled at the make attack roll step. The attacking unit's controller players chooses to trigger the critical effect of a single weapon carried by the model in the unit. This model, this must be a ranged weapon if the unit is making a ranged attack or a melee if they're making a melee attack. Only one critical effect can be triggered per attack, no matter how many criticals were rolled. Um, so keep that in mind too, and then we'll show you some of the critical effects here as well. And then damaging the Contemptor Dreadnought, uh, this is a separate kind of phase type thing, so um, it basically goes over how all that works. There's two separate cards in the command, uh, command deck, which we'll also show you here soon. So weapons, there's a whole slew of ranged weapons and melee weapons, and they all give you, you know, some sort of thing here, like shoot six. So guess what, if you're shooting six, uh, <laughs> you know, that's going to do really, really good work as far as um, for each melee, total the assault value of all models in the unit and any weapon which are carrying. For a range attack, total the shoot values of the weapon carried by all models in the unit. Um, the controlling player rolls this many dice. So your shoot is six. Guess how many dice you roll, plus whatever else is in the unit. So like I said, more dice the better as far as you know doing a lot of damage and then some things don't have as many shoot dice but they have a critical effect like a plasma gun uh, add four dice to the attack roll these four dice roll at least two critical hits the firing models are removed as a casualty after the attack is resolved hmm well that's uh that's pretty dirty so it's a good way to get seven attacks but you know you're kind of gambling there as far as a melted gun goes if a target unit is within three x's of the activated unit the first target model counts his armor value at zero when making its defense roll so guess who's going to <laughs> you know what I mean? So it goes on from there, and there's some tactics to it depending on what mission you're playing, how much cover there is, and then of course your melee weapons, you know, assault plus one. A paired lightning calls have assault value of plus three instead of plus plus one, so obviously, you know, three is better than one, duh. Power sword, I mean, you know, all this stuff has great critical effects, uh, leading up to the contemptor power fist, which is assault plus two, uh, and the it kind of works like the Melta, the first model counts his armor value at zero when making his defense roll. So there you go. You're going to get smushed. Rolling more dice is better. Eh, you know, basic math. It's John, it's, the, it's the John Madden kind of game. What you want to do here is roll a lot of dice and hope that your enemy doesn't roll a lot of dice.
kind of kind of get what I'm saying here. But that being said, it is a fantastic battle system, you know, with a great backdrop, you know, playing in the dark, you know, dank caverns of Kalth, and you know, it seems like very fast-paced missions. I mean, the very first one is trying you you set up next to each other, but really your actual target is to get to the top of the board to get into the blast doors before you're incinerated by the Viridian Star. So you got to keep all this in mind. It's like you know, it's like, wow, do I do I beat their face in, or do I play tactical, or what do I do? I don't know, you know? So it's really interesting play. Now, here's some of the command cards, and it's a whole deck, but the whole deck isn't obviously all the same stuff. So here's your squads, like, just for quick reference, like, here's your tactical squad for each faction, and there's your cataphracty, and then you got your special characters as well, um, and then, of course, you got the... Uh, Sword Garrix, the Bull, which is the Contemptor, and there's those damage cards we were talking about. It's, you know, just happens that there's six of them. How about that? And then you've got your two sets of command cards that you draw into your hand. You get your Ultramarine and your Word Bearers, and they do different things. They have all sorts of different effects, and there's going to be a bunch of different tactics. Like play when a Word Bearers unit makes a melee attack before rolling dice. After rolling attack dice, roll an additional dice for each hit scored. If these dice would cause further hits, no more dice are rolled. So, you know, similar mechanics to some stuff we've seen, you know, in the in, in the actual game of 40k, but kind of, you know, watered down a little bit for newer players, for uh, veteran players just looking to play a quick game, so to speak, and just get, you know, just get stuck in um, with kind of like, you know, that fantastic backdrop of the heresy of, you know, the betrayal of Cal, the Viridian Song, the Arcologies, and all of that. So it's really, it's really cool to see uh, kind of how all this comes together. And then the back section, it basically goes over the actual Horus Heresy itself, you know, the, uh, the fluff section that you're always going to see, you know, kind of different things. The Battle of Cal gets into Ultramarines, gets into Word Bearers. And then, of course, there's a section that's like, hey, if you'd like to, you know, buy more stuff, here you go. Because what company wouldn't want to suggest more things for you to buy? I mean, every day when you buy stuff in a shopping cart, they're like, hey, would you like this? Oh, and there's the, um, there's the two, uh, I think they're audiobooks. I forget. I think they are audiobooks. I'm not... Well, anyways, that's where the special characters come from. Uh, some extra extra bonus stuff there. And then McCrag's Arner is a graphic novel. Uh, that's really swell, actually. I got it. I picked it up. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Definitely check that one out for sure. So, that being said, uh, you know, that's basically how to play the game. A lot of people were wondering about it. It does seem like uh, a really cool game to play. And, obviously, it's two-player. It isn't one-player like the Execution Force game was with the Assassin's Box. Uh, it's more of a definitely a tactical two two man kind of kind of feel with each model representing a distinct model and not a unit so to speak you know like a whole squad of ten dudes this is actual squad on squad model on model combat um, that's kind of like got a little bit of a um, I wouldn't say um, I guess it, I guess it's kind of skirmish. But it, 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 there's a lot of models, so it's hard to say, you know, it's kind of skirmish. It, it ramps up from being skirmish, you know what I mean? Like, um, it, depending on the mission. You can obviously play skirmish because there is 30 models in the set. But that being said, you know, some of these missions just aren't designed for that. And there will be a bonus mission in the White Dwarf uh, next week as well. So definitely look out for that if you're really starting to get stuck in with the Betrayal of Cal. So find a friend, pick up the box. Look at expanding your new your new uh, horse heresy collection, and hopefully we'll get more and more models, and this will become the Age of Darkness kind of thing. Will become a whole backdrop product uh, to the uh, offerings from Games Workshop here in the near future, because uh, it's a it's a brave new world for the hobby, and it's uh, exciting times that is for sure. Thanks for watching my How to Play Horse Heresy Betrayal at Calth video. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.